What do you get when you combine this with this? Why, milk stout, of course. Well, no, no, no you don't. But milk stout is what I'm gonna brew today and gonna be having some fun with carbonation caps. Hi, I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. This week is Milk Stout, a style that dates back to the 1800s where the style became popular because of its potentially more nutritious benefits. It was good for sales to say that this beer, hmm, it's got milk in it. Now, Milk Stout doesn't actually have milk in it. It has lactose. And there's something quite interesting about lactose when it comes to brewing beer. Now, normally when you add sugar into the boil during beer, I've got some corn sugar here that I might add in, what it does is it bumps up the ABV. Essentially, the sugar becomes yeast food. The yeast consumes it and it therefore makes more alcohol in the beer, but the finished product is not any sweeter. The yeast has eaten all of that sugars. But with lactose, well, yeast lack the enzyme to consume lactose. So any lactose that you add in will be in the finished product. There's a really nice experiment that really illustrates this on Biology Corner. So what they did is they filled up a bunch of flasks with different types of sugar, glucose, sucrose, and lactose, added some yeast and let it ferment, and then added little balloons on the top so you could see if any CO2 was getting generated, which means fermentation was happening. And the lactose sample, unlike the glucose and the sucrose, well, they didn't ferment at all. And that's because the yeast does not have the lactase enzyme. If you add the lactase enzyme in with the lactose, then fermentation does happen. So what that all means for us as brewers is that we need to really carefully consider how much lactose to add in our beer because it will definitely affect the perceived sweetness of the beer in the finished product. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves talking about lactose because that goes in the boil. Let's talk about what goes in the mash. So I'm building a beer here with an original gravity of 10.54. That will give us about a 5.6% beer. Now the base malt for this beer is Maris Otter, and that will make up about 70% of the total grist. In addition to that, I have 10% of pale chocolate malt, 5% of roasted barley, and then for the mouthfeel, I have 5% of flaked oats. Mashing this one at 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius. Now I wanted to quickly show a, a cool little thing I learned from Key at Kegland, and that's how to turn a regular soda bottle into like a mini keg. And it's actually pretty simple if you, if you have the right gear. So, this is the stuff that I'm using. What I've got is I've got this T piece here from Kegland, and it's designed to screw on to a bottle. So I can screw this on here, and uh, now I've got this little T piece connected, and, and it works with sort of any standard size soda bottle. Now the other thing I've got are these carbonation caps. Now these are really cool. I use these with my firm Zilla, for example. Um, and they can be used as gas posts or liquid posts. Uh, they, they, they're dual uh, support for that. And what you can do with two of these is basically make a little keg. So what I've done is I've added a little bit of line to the bottom of this one here, and then this other one I'm just gonna use as a gas post. And what I'm gonna do is put this in through the T and screw it on, and then put this other one here to act as my gas post. And what I'm gonna be able to do now is to send beer into this keg and regulate the pressure that it is under 
using the gas post. So let's fill this guy up with some beer. So I've got a keg down here and this is the, the little lead to it. And I'm just going to hook this up into my bottle. And beer is now flowing in. All right, that's filled up now and it's under pressure. So now I need a way to serve it. Uh, what I've got here is a little picnic tap assembly and I just took a regular picnic tap and then just cut off the end of this to make it super, super short. And then I can hook up um, onto this a beer post. So I've got a liquid post here which I can just screw in and tighten up. And now I've got a little mini serving accessory. You could just use a regular picnic tap, but I quite liked making everything really, really small here. So now it's a case of, uh, you know, I've, I've taken this, I'm, I'm ready to serve it at a party. So I'll just hook this on. There we go. And uh, get ready to, to pour some beer. Actually, that seems to be working quite well. Now, of course, we are losing pressure in this bottle. I think if you if you pressurize this enough, um, you can probably get pretty much a the whole thing emptied out without having to top it back up with CO2. But yeah, just just take a look at that. That's <laughs> a pretty nice pour and it's served straight from a soda bottle. Now to balance the sweetness of this beer, we do need to bump up the bitterness a little bit. So there's only one hop addition in this beer and that is Fuggles. And we're going to add enough Fuggles to get to 34 IBU, which in a five gallon batch is two bags of Fuggles. So, yep, these go in at the start of the boil. Been diving back into that Tennessee whiskey. Now the lactose goes in with 15 minutes left in the boil. If you're brewing a, a five gallon batch, you'll need about one pound of lactose. And this can go straight in, it doesn't need to go in the hop filter. We want this just to dissolve into the beer. Before I let you back into my bed. Yeast for this beer, I'm using Y Yeast 1187, that's Ringwood Ale. I'm gonna ferment that at 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. And Original Gravity came in at 10.54, so on the money, I gotta tell you, pretty excited to try this beer. Well, it is time to try this milk stout and I have brought along Oliver as my volunteer. Yep. So uh, Oliver, the first thing we do is we always look at the visuals with our drinks and my milk stout is not quite looking the same as your milk stout. Mine's a lot lighter than yours. Have you any idea what we could do about this? Yes. What do you think? Chocolate syrup in there. Chocolates? Well, I just happen to have some chocolate syrup here. <gasps> so um, let's stick that in. You tell me when I've put enough in. Um, more? More? Okay, okay. Now Oliver did tell me that we should keep this brandless, right? Because they're yeah. not sponsoring us. So this is generic chocolate syrup. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can give it a stir and make it look like my drink a bit more. Oh, there we go. It's looking more of the pot already. Okay, so we've got milk stout. Right, so uh, let's have a look at, well, let's have a smell of the aroma next. See what we think about this. Milky and chocolate too. <laughs> well, that sounds like a winner to me. As for my one, getting a little bit of sweetness in the aroma, not, not too much, um, and also a little bit of the roastiness I as well. I got lactose too. Oh, you got lactose? Yeah, I got yeah. lactose now. I'm not really smelling the lactose in my beer, but it does oh. have lactose too. Yeah. Okay, well, we need to put this to the test. So, let's give this a taste. Now this one, this one 
is a little bit sweet, a little bit milky, but not overly sweet. I was quite concerned that you can overdo milk stout and it just becomes a bit of a sickly mess. But this is a real nice balance, I think, of the roastiness of, of the beer, but also that that lactose or that sweet, just sort of more in the aftertaste, makes it very pleasant. Um, yeah. <laughs> you just sat there thinking, I'm just going to drink more of this sugary milk, right? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> now, um, let's just have a quick sniff only of each other's beverage. Oh yeah, yours smells like straight up chocolate. Different smell. Does that smell like regular beer to you or does it smell Well, like I don't know what beer smells like. Of so... course not, you've never smelt beer before. Yes, never. Even though there's beer in this house every week. Yes. Yeah, I can't. I close your door, so you can't. That's right, he can't stand the, the smell of brewing. I keep telling you it smells like cereal. Nope. All right, well, that is it. I'm actually very pleased at how this has turned out, and we are going to continue on in the stout theme. Um, and even, you know, milk is something you might have for breakfast, yeah. right? This next beer is also something you might have for breakfast. But for now, Oliver, I appreciate you doing this tasting with me. And cheers. cheers! I'm gonna go watch YouTube. Go watch YouTube, okay. <laughs> I, can I recommend, there's this channel called the Homebrew Challenge. 